Well, good evening from Somerset Park, where Scotland's under-19s play their final qualifying round tie for Euro 2023. France the opponents tonight, and it'll be a real good test for Billy Stark's side. Scotland with a 1-0 defeat to Iceland in their first match last Wednesday, but bounced back with a 5-2 win over Kazakhstan on Saturday. And with the way the group stands, heading into the final game tonight, Scotland know what they need to do. A win, and they reach the elite rounds in March. A draw or defeat won't be enough. Myself and Rory Loy will be bringing you the coverage. This is a really strong team Scotland are coming up against tonight, Rory. Yes, it is indeed, and results in this group so far have shown that. They're going to be a formidable opponent. However, it's good in the sense that Scotland know they just need to go out and win the game, Andrew. Any type of win, doesn't matter how they do it, they get through the group. So, fingers crossed, they can um, score the goals they did um, against Kazakhstan and try not to concede at the other end because France will provide a very potent attack. Yeah, well, France with nine goals in their two games so far. So Scotland know what they're up against. And Billy Stark has made four changes for this game. Out go Harkness, Alan Reid and Hepburn. In come McPherson, Blaney, Duncan and Pollock for his side tonight. And what are you expecting from this Scotland team tonight? Well, I'm expecting them to go out and try and, to try and win the game. How they approach... You know, the first 45 minutes will be interesting whether Billy Stark sets up to try and contain France uh, and try and hit on the counter, you know, keep the game at 0-0 as long as possible and then try and grab a goal. Or he may feel that he's got the, the talent at, um, at his fingertips to go and win the game um, and take it to, to France tonight. So, you know, Mabudi is a great outlet, very skillful. You've got Pollock on the other side, who's got good first-team experience at Hearts, and you can sniff out a goal as well. So... It'll be interesting to see whether it's uh, trying to contain France in the initial stages or whether they feel, let's just go for it, we've got none to lose. And when we take a look at the France team as well, we talked about them being a strong side. Four players currently on the books at Paris Saint-Germain, but the man to look out for, number nine, Matisse Tell, just 17 years old. He's at Bayern Munich at the moment. He scored four goals for Bayern Munich's first team in 12 appearances this season. He scored a hat-trick against Kazakhstan as well in their opening group of this qualifying round. So Scotland will need to look out for him, but plenty of other players with a lot of quality there. <laughs> there is, and I mean, that's quite an unbelievable stat to have somebody that's got that, those amount of appearances for Bayern Munich, a European heavyweight, and score four goals at that level and be playing at under-19s. You know, just shows the the strength that France have right throughout their setup from the from the top team right through. Um, you know, scored a hat trick already. He'll be full of confidence. France have won both their games, six points from six. Um, you know, littered with talent throughout the team. But you know, tells just an example of what Scotland can expect tonight. Tough opponents, but the positive is Scotland can still get out of their group. They can reach the elite rounds in March. It will take a win tonight, but is that a positive that the players just know what they need to do? Yeah, it's not too complicated, is it? Uh, they know the task at hand. Win by any way or means, um, and you, you, you sneak into second place, which in a very tough group would be, you know, very, very... A lot of positives. Um, you know, they weren't particularly great against Iceland in spells. Kazakhstan, they really showed that they can be uh, strong in attack and score some nice goals. Josh Adam up nice positions. It's important if they do stick with the 4-2-3-1 formation, Andrew, that they get him on the ball high up the pitch. They don't want to make it a long night um, camped in their own half. Win, lose or draw tonight, it'll be a really good learning experience for these Scotland players because they are coming up against quality opponents and these are the types of games that these young players will really learn from. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's not something they'll, they'll recognise tonight, you know, unless they go and win the game. Uh, the overriding feeling will be disappointment. If they go and win the game, then great. But you're absolutely right. When the dust settles and when they come up against these teams in the future, whether that'll be at under-19s, under-21, or fingers crossed, hopefully some would progress right to the first team, it will provide uh, critical experience for them playing against top, top opponents. Well, the teams are making their way out the tunnel at the moment, and both boxes will be... Uh, vital as well because Scotland will need to keep France out at one end and be clinical at the other when the chances come. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Andrew. You know, set pieces in these types of games when there is an overwhelming favourite, let's not kid ourselves, France are overwhelming favourites. You know, set pieces are huge. So quite often we see so many wasted. So when Scotland do progress up the pitch and win free kicks and corners high up the pitch, obviously, they need to make them count. The delivery needs to be spot on. Get the big guys forward. Well, the action getting underway soon, but first of all, it will be the national anthems.
the national anthem of Scotland, the flower of Scotland. Well, one win and one defeat for Scotland under-19s in this group stage so far. And all hangs on this game. The elite rounds take place in March ahead of Euro 2023, which take place in Malta next summer. Scotland will want to be there. France will want to be there as well. France have a good chance of getting through two wins from their opening two games, but Scotland know that three points tonight is what they need. The team's breaking off for their official team photos at the moment. Mackenzie Cars, the uh, captain for Scotland tonight. He's captained them for the previous two games as well, making his 12th appearance for Scotland under 19s as well. That puts him just one behind Callum Booth, who's the all-time cap holder at this level. So someone of his experience at under 19 level could be key in a game tonight, Rory. Yeah, I mean, we, we've spoken about it already, the experience you gain from playing against sides like France. Mackenzie Castle have been there and done it against a good few teams. And, you know, he'll need to use that experience throughout tonight to guide the guys around him and the players around him to, um, to try and cope with France's threat. The officials tonight from Moldova and Bulgaria. There'll be the exchange of pennants now. The France captain, Khalil Fayad, the 18-year-old who plays his football for Montpellier in France. And there is a lot of experience in this France team. There's players who have played in the Champions League, in the Europa League, in Ligue 1 in France. So a lot of technical ability Scotland will be coming up against tonight. Yes, absolutely. I mean... Speak about the French. Generally speaking, football in terms, they you know they don't, they don't lack with technical ability, but they've also got some big, big guys in the squad. So it's going to be physical for Scotland tonight. Number eight, Ugo Chukwu looks like a right physical player, um, as does Iman Caro. So yeah, they're going to need to be at it in all aspects of their game tonight, Scotland. Well, Scotland scored five goals here on Saturday in a 5-2 win over Kazakhstan. It was a 1-0 defeat before that to Iceland. Iceland beating Kazakhstan 4-1 today. Ori Oscarson scoring a double. He was really impressive against Scotland last week. But it's all down to France and Scotland. It'll be Robbie Ewer standing over the ball, getting us underway. And he's in good form. Got a couple of goals in that game on Saturday. He'll be hoping to get into more dangerous positions again today. Dimitri Muntin just checking his watch before we get underway here at Somerset Park. Plenty of young fans in attendance for this one. And Scotland's Euro 2023 fate lies in these next 90 minutes. Jacob Blaney just slipping as he played that one forward. You're losing out to Khalil Fayed, the France captain tonight. Scotland will be desperate to get a quick start. Yeah, they will. They'll be desperate to make an impression. Early doors, set their stall out um, and set the standards. Just looking at the way they're setting up, I reckon they would set up 4-2-3-1 based on watching them warm up and things. But Finlay Pollock's playing further on the pitch than I thought. Looks like he's going to play in between the midfield and striking line. Yeah, we've seen Josh Adam play in a more central role in the last couple of games, but it looks as if he's playing out on this near side in the first half. Yeah, I think it is a, it is a 4 2 3 1. How, however, fin, Finlay Pollock looks like he's the central one as opposed to Josh Adam. 
Looks like he's filling in, potentially marking Cali Fayad. Fayad to Fernandez. Three of the France back four on the books at Paris Saint Germain. Looking for the quick ball through there, but it's gone all the way through to Murray Johnson. Yeah, he's looking to split the lines there. Ayman Carey, that's what he'll do. Disguised pass, fake to play out wide, zip it into the front men. Smith looking for that ball forward, but it only goes as far as Marvin De Lima. El Hanach to Terence Kudu. Ball went under the foot of El Hanach there. For a second, it looked as if Robbie Yor may be able to get in. Out of possession, Finlay Pollock and Josh Adam are, are really sitting in. It becomes a 4 5 1 out of possession. As you can see just behind your pitchers when the camera pans, you get five players right across the pitch and then a four behind them. And Robbie Yor plows a lone four up front. De Lima with the switch to Terence Kudu. Goes for the first time ball in. Too deep for anyone in a white shirt. And it'll just be cleared out by Ben McPherson. Yeah, he does well there, McPherson, not to concede the corner. He doesn't know what's behind him. Manages to get his foot on it and avert the danger. Leslie Ukachugu to Khalil Fayad. Kudu. Heavy touch allows Robert Ewer to get something on it, but it's back in France's possession. Ugachuku, who's a big physical presence in that midfield. Yeah, he's not half, he's, he's a big physical player. Scotland just need to be careful, those two banks, I spoke about the four and then the five. They can't get too deep, I know it's difficult, playing against a good side. And that's what we need, that's a really, really good play there by Ryan Duncan, squeezing the game, getting his players up the pitch. If I add to Kudu, his first touch means he just has to go back to his captain. El Hanach to Nehemiah Fernandez. France just happy to be patient at the moment, wait for the right opportunity to make that pass forward. That one just too high for Marvin Delina. Yeah, looking for the switch of play there. They move the ball really quickly, France, but Scotland looked pretty solid so far. It's been a, a decent little opening spell. Pollock turns well. Out to Josh Adam. Still on it, Josh Adam. May go all the way himself, or he will find Diri Mabudi. The ball across the face of goal is blocked by Nehemiah Fernandez. But that's the first real time of Scotland got forward. It was real positive play. Yeah, it was. Excellent play from Finlay Pollock in the middle of the pitch. Driving, showing intent, doing exactly what we spoke about. Quick start. Scotland take the corner quickly. It's Ryan Duncan. It's headed away by Fernandez. Adam, lovely pass to Kerr Smith. McPherson. Mabudi over the top towards McPherson. Just isn't able to find the Celtic fullback. But that'll give Scotland belief. It will, it will. They took the quick corner um, just after it, but F F Finlay Pollock runs forward, does so, so well. And then Josh Adams sco uh, showing good close control. Plays a lovely ball through to M Mabudi. The fullback gets caught out. Could do. You'd expect better from Mabudi. He's capable of better. Not his best delivery. Josh Adam and Thierry Mabudi both playing their football at Manchester City, both linked up well in Saturday's game against Kazakhstan, both got a goal as well in that match. Yeah, they were both very, very good, as was Hepburn on the day. Some really impressive attacking phases of play from Scotland, hopefully we can see a few of those tonight, as we've just did. Kudu, who will take every opportunity to get forward down this right side. Matthew Anderson... Look to get his foot on the ball, but it will be a Scotland goal kick. 
Yeah, I just wondered whether Kudu was possibly offside. He seemed quite high up the pitch when the ball was struck. Matthew Anderson gets back in and covers well. He has that drive and run from Finlay Pollock. Plays it out to Adam. He squares off his defender. It's a lovely ball as well. I think I get, did Kudu a disservice. I think it was Mutu Wam Mutu. They got caught out. Mutu Wam Mungu, sorry. Apologies. One of the PSG contingent in this France side. Marvin De Lima trying to keep that ball in play, but just isn't able to. Was also called up for Portugal's under-19s for this international window, but has decided to play for the country of his birth, France. Maybe he just thought Scotland was a more exotic location to visit, and that's why he chose France, Andrew. How could he resist Somerset Park? Ryan Duncan to Jacob Blaney, left out of the starting lineup on Saturday. Jacob Blaney for Connor Allen, but he's back in alongside Kerr Smith tonight. Terence Kudu just assessing his options from this throw in. Looking for some movement. Goes towards Matisse Tell, who is the danger man, but we haven't seen much of him so far in these opening eight minutes. Yeah, the structure and organisation of Billy Stark's men has been good. They've not only defended pretty well so far, the one opportunity they did have to go forward, they made good use of it. Fayad just able to intercept that throw in from Ryan Duncan. Goes across to Muntu Wamungu. Hanach Fernandez Fayad and once again no rush from France in trying to get the ball forward just trying to move the ball but also move that Scotland shape yeah that's just it they're trying to shuffle Scotland across the pitch and then potentially look at the big switch Fernandez to Muntu Wamungu They will wait, France. They won't rush it. They'll keep doing this until such time as one Scottish player switches off and then they'll try and pick that pass. Well, Matis Tell was the original target. He's now got the ball. The first real glance we'll get to see of the Bayern Munich striker who wins a throw-in, Matthew Anderson making the block. Good defending. They know Matthias Tell's a threat. £25 million pounds he cost Bayern Munich in the summer. That's what Scotland are up against tonight. Got big lads, France. Scotland will need to be brave in defending set pieces. Marvin De Lima to take. It goes towards the front post, and it's deflected just wide of the mark. The referee says it came off a French body last. Could have been Matisse Tell who was attacking the front post. He's adamant that it's a corner kick. However, it did look like it just came off himself it's very difficult to tell from those pictures I must say but thankfully the decision goes away of Scotland Murray Johnson to take the goal kick hasn't had anything to do yet so far tonight but has been impressive for Scotland in the last couple of games yeah he, he has um, and I think he's going to need a big game tonight 10 minutes in he's not had much to do but I would expect him to be relatively busy throughout the course of the next 80 minutes 
Fayad to Tell, who's crowded out in midfield. Anderson back to Jacob Blaney. McPherson looking for Mabudi down the right side, but isn't able to keep the ball in play. I think it actually took a deflection off a France player, and it will be a Scotland throw. They don't seem particularly interested in what we would call the high press these days. France are quite happy to sit with two banks of four and leave their two up the pitch when Scotland have the ball. Finley Pollock doing well to rob France high up the park. Cars. Adam. Tries to find Thierry Mabudi, but Marvin de Lima is back. I'm happy to carry the ball forward. Here's Tell. Matty's Tell gets that one all wrong. Been talking about his quality and all his goals for Bayern Munich. Maybe not his best moment of the season. No, possibly not. Um, you could argue it takes a bobble. He's just trying to switch it out wide. Um, but yeah, that certainly didn't look like tw 25 million pounds worth of player. But um, he's also shown flashes of good movement, good technique, and good touch as well. So we'll let him away with one. Robbie, you're dispossessed by Khalil Fayad and then fouls the France captain. Ugachukwu. Minto will go over to Ayman Kari. Plenty of possession for the two France centre-backs so far. As they look to find that space further forward. And the ball is over towards Edan Diop, but it's well defended by Scotland in the end. Get the ball away. Diri Mabudi finds Robbie Ewer. Can Scotland create something at the other end? Josh Adam. Marvin De Lima goes down and it will be a free kick to France. Yeah, it's a good breakaway from Scotland. He just wonder, can Josh Adam take his man down the line? Mix his game up a little bit and give Kudu something to think about. It's a good crisp ball out from Robbie Ewer. And you're just, can you go down the outside? He goes back into the bodies. And he crowded out. I'm not sure, not so sure that's a foul, to be honest. I think Ben McPherson uses his body well there. Major Kuchu to Matty's tell. Will be a Scotland throw. Seems keen to pull out onto the left hand side. Matty's tell and get involved in the game that way. You're trying to get the layoff, but Ayman Kari wins it back for France. Fayad, who's looking to pull the strings in the midfield. Marvin De Lima. Straight into the arms of Murray Johnson. I think they're looking for Robbie Ewer to keep the ball there. Normally, in young strikers, it's the final piece of the jigsaw. It takes them a little while to know when to take a touch, when to take pop it off first time it's vitally important that he keeps the ball for his team tonight Kerr Smith to Jacob Blaney Blaney playing his football at Hibs, made his Hibs debut in the final game of last season in a 4 0 win over St Johnston. Goes long looking for Robbie Ewer over the top. France can deal with that one easily. Yeah, again, France aren't too interested in putting pressure on the ball when Scotland have got it at the back. There's no harm in taking, you know, take a leaf out of France's book, make three, four, five passes, keep the ball, because you don't want to be running about all night trying to get it back again. Elhanich to Idan Diop. Josh Adam wins it initially. 
plan to get it back and they will get a throw in with 16 minutes on the clock how do you think Billy Stark will be feeling about the start of the game I think he'll be he'll be pretty happy so far you know France have threatened but it's been lofty balls in behind really that have tested the back line of Scotland and they've stood up to the test pretty easily and they've looked a threat going the other way Ugachukwu through to Muntu Wamungu keeps it in finds Matty's tail and the strike was wayward and eventually cleared by Jacob Blaney McPherson and Smith get split there the ball down the side ball over to Kudu Matthew Anderson does well to get in there first though Maya Fernandez. To Lima to Ugachukwu, who just slipped as he took his first touch. Allowed Mackenzie Cars to get in there. Nehemiah Fernandez signed professional contract with Paris Saint Germain in the summer. Ugachukwu trying to play it first time in towards Zidane Diop. Fernandez. It really is for Scotland. Murray Johnson and then nine men behind the ball and trying to stop France. It's only Robbie Ewer who's actually engaging the ball at the moment that's in front of the ball at any stage France's attacks Kudu Ugachukwu it's a lovely back heel trying to find Aidan Diop but Jacob Blaney holds him off but did touch the ball according to the referee Dimitri Mundane yeah that looks like a decision I think that was a corner but the difference you know I spoke about Scotland doing this if you watch here I spoke about Scotland doing this against Kazakhstan is moving the ball quickly that is how to beat a low block. Move the ball quickly and it shows there. They get in behind and win the corner. Moldovan official. Not happy with something that's happening in the box. Just delaying the taking of the corner for now. Yeah, he's motioning somebody. He's holding on with two arms and wrapping round. Marvin De Lima to take this one. It goes towards the front post. And that one is over. The Scotland bar from Ugachukwu. Yeah, we spoke, spoke about how big a physical presence Ugachukwu was. It's a good ball in. The Scotland player does enough just to put him off. At that front post. Good ball in from De Lima. I think it's Kerr Smith. He doesn't make first contact, Kerr Smith, but he does enough to make Ugachukwu glance the ball over the bar. Matty's tail on the turn. He'll get the shot away, Matty's tail. And that is why Bayern Munich paid £25 million pounds for him. A fantastic finish from the striker. Four goals for Bayern Munich's first team this season. And it's fourth, four goals in three games in this qualifying round for him. Well, Murray Johnson is an exceptional goalkeeper for his age, but he doesn't even move. That finish is of the highest standard, almost lasered it into the bottom corner with his boot Matthias Tell and it just shows you it takes a second to be punished, poor ball from Smith you must say Kerr Smith one shift, one touch to shift it one touch to shoot right in the bottom corner, 1-0 France yeah a player of real quality Matthias Tell, not only those three goals against Kazakhstan in the opening game but two assists along with it, five goal contributions in that game He's now got one in this game, and France are ahead with 20 minutes on the clock. Possibly been ultra-critical given he did give the ball away and he was out of position, Kerr Smith, but you, know, you can trace any goal back to any extent to see how could it be avoided. He clearly gives the ball away, Kerr Smith, and makes a mistake, but can he engage the ball quicker? Can he engage the ball sooner? Is he worried Tail's going to skip round him? Needs to stop that shot going in, in my opinion, but what a finish that was. 
has a Champions League start to his name as well this season, Matis Tell against Victoria Pilsen. He's come on in three other games in the group stages. But Scotland have it all to do now. They know they need to win this game to get through to the elite rounds in March. And they need to score at least twice to do it. They do look quite relaxed on the ball, France, though, I think. They're approaching this as if they're already through and won the group. Which ultimately I think they, they will. However, I think it gives Scotland an opportunity to nick the ball up in dangerous areas. Well, we saw on Saturday that Scotland do have goals in them. Five against Kazakhstan, but this is a step up in opposition tonight. I mean, the power that was on that strike, combined with the accuracy, was <laughs> was deadly. Um, really, really impressive. El Hanach. Ugachukwu going long, and Matis Tell just bundling over Jacob Blaney. Illegally, according to the referee. Yeah, it looked like it to me, even on the replay there. Tail doesn't agree, but I think that's a foul. But this is where it becomes extremely difficult from a psychological point of view from Scotland. Whilst it's 0-0, whilst you're tightening your shape, even if you don't look like scoring or you're not getting up the pitch much, you've got something to hold on to. They're 1-0 down now, 22 minutes gone. They've got to be mentally strong here, stay disciplined and try and build a way back into the game. Cars. That will be a free kick to Scotland in a good area too. Yep, the captain, Fayad, a little bit too eager. Mackenzie Karst does well to shift the ball by the first one, take on Fayad, and that is a foul. Clear foul. He knows it straight away, puts his hand up. You just wonder if this is a good distance to get at first attempt on goal for Scotland a couple of players standing over it, Ryan Duncan, Finlay Pollock it looks as if it will be the Aberdeen man Ryan Duncan to take Mackenzie Carr's just still limping after that challenge I'd be going for goal here, so I would I think you're close enough in that you can have a dig, he's got good technique good ability, and you don't want to waste it have a pop at goal make the goalkeeper work or even better, beat him. Ryan Duncan to take, it's a great strike. And it's just wide of the France goal. So unlucky from Ryan Duncan. He's got two goals for Aberdeen this season. But just unable to get that one the right side of the post. Yeah, the crowd, some of the crowd thought it was in. It just ripples the side net, and as you say there, Andrew, good technique, tries to find that bottom corner. Can't quite do it, but encouraging signs for Scotland. He did have the France goalkeeper, Robin Risser, worried for a moment. Fernandes. El Hanich, who goes all the way back to his goalkeeper, making him a bit of a jog. I'm on carry. Just wonder now, Andrew, see, see, when they've got possession like that, can they take a little bit of a risk, Scotland? Commit one more player forward and try and nick it? I understand they don't want to break shape, they don't want to go too down, but that's the type of positions where going as a pack might work in their favour. Fayad. Ugachukwu. Fayad goes out to Muntu Wamungu. Ball poached by Ben McPherson. Who eventually runs the ball out of play. To show the quality of this France side, they've not really had too many sights of goal, but the one they did from Matty's tail 
finish superbly. My goodness, it certainly was. And that first touch there from Mintu Wamungu is probably the poorest we've seen from the French team so far. Ugachukwu gets it back from Matis Tell. And eventually, well, it looked as if he slipped in the box, but it will be a penalty to France. The Scotland players aren't happy about it. Well, I have to echo your thoughts, Andrew, your initial thoughts. It certainly looked like he slipped. Don't get me wrong, it's a wonderful one-two on the edge of the box. But it looks like he loses his footing. Let's see here again. He pops the one-two with Tell Ugachukwu. Oh, that's a shocking decision. I actually think... Big Ferson gets a, a touch on the ball. I'm not... Oh, he's booking him as well. Extremely harsh. And I actually think when the referee points to the spot, Ugo Chukwu stays down and makes more of a meal of it because he knows himself. But even on the replay, Andrew, I think that's a shocking decision. Not the decisions you want going against you in a game you need to win. And France have the chance to double their lead from the spot and it will be Matisse Tell to take. Dimitri... Montini didn't give himself time to think. It's one of those reactive ones. I think if he takes a second to, to, to reassess, although he does go on to book him afterwards as well, the fact that the ball stops dead as well suggests that McPherson gets a touch, gets a touch on it. Very, very harsh. Let's hope that Murray Johnson can produce the goods here. Well, it was Rory's man of the match in the game against Iceland last Wednesday, Murray Johnson. The Bayern Munich striker Matis Tell to take four goals in three games in this qualifying round so far. And calm as you like from Matis Tell, doubles France's lead. And Scotland have a long way back now if they want to make the elite rounds. Yeah, that's really disappointing. It is a long, long way back now. As you quite rightly say, Andrew, you don't need decisions like that going against you. Wrong decisions. Referee was in a good position. Take nothing away from Matthias Till, who slots it calmly into the corner. Murray Johnson goes the wrong way. Let's take another look at this. Oh, I mean, he actually gets his full foot to the ball and stops it. It's an outrageous decision. Yeah, you can quite often tell from the reaction of players, and Ben McPherson was in disbelief. I, I, the referee's in a good position, though. I mean, I, then to go on and book him, that's, that's an awful, awful decision, and it puts Scotland in a really tricky spot, and it was actually, what makes it more frustrating, it was actually excellent defending um, from what was a really good move from France, but really poor from the referee. Ukachukwu robs Kerr Smith. Go towards the box again. Tall midfielder, Carey. Kudu. Josh Adam wins it back. He'll have to try and get out of the corner now. It goes straight back to Kudu. The ball into the box, and there is Marvin De Lima. Chests it, and Murray Johnson has to make sure it goes over his own bar. I think you can tell it goes against every ounce of Josh Adams being that he doesn't just want to, to lump it out the pitch. However, he has to do that there, in my opinion. The ball's delivered in, and De Lima's unlucky. It bounces right in front of him. It's not easy. Fayed. The ball goes all the way through, and the flag stays down, and it's a third goal for France. Zidane Diop tapping it over the line. The Monaco forward making it three, and you've got to say with half an hour on the clock, it looks as if Scotland probably won't be heading to the elite rounds in March, Rory. No, it certainly doesn't look like it now. It's a wonderful ball in, I must say. I, I half expected the flag to go up. It's, I mean, it's impossible to tell from that angle. It's a fantastic ball in it, it causes so much indecisiveness um, in the box. It's the captain that puts it in, Fayad. Wonderful ball into a very, very difficult area to defend. And unfortunately for Scotland, Diop gets on the end of it. And if it was a mountain to climb before that, well, Scotland are up against it now. They need to be careful now, Scotland. Scotland trying to get forward quickly, but it will be a throw in. A goal kick it will be to. France. 
And I was going to say after the injustice of that penalty, it was important the Scotland players didn't let their heads go down, but they almost conceded too quickly for that to be the case at all. They did. I mean, it's a great ball in. Again, the questions you've got to ask is, can you stop it at source in that type of scenario? I think it can be stopped at source, because if you don't stop it, the quality is that good. De Lima trying to find Matty's tail. Kerr Smith just striding in and clearing towards Robbie Ewer. Wonderful turn by Robbie Ewer. Adam, and what a pass that is towards Finlay Pollock. And finds Robbie Ewer, doesn't quite in the middle, just behind the Ranger striker. And there, Maya Fernandez gets away. Well, we talk about the quality of France. That was a fantastic defence splitting pass. It really, really was. Just looking for the cross to be in front of Robbie Ewer rather than behind him. But all things considered, I think Scotland have actually looked, given that they don't expect to have much of the ball, you know, semi dangerous going forward. It's just so difficult now that you're 3-0 down. Well, Idan Diop, the scorer of the third goal. He got two goals against Kazakhstan. One tonight for him. Incidentally, Matis Tell is now the joint top goal scorer in these qualifying rounds with Sonny Perkins, the England striker who plays his club football with Leeds United. Cars. You're in as soon as any Scotland player gets in the ball, surrounded by white jerseys at the moment. Yeah, they've sparked, those goals have sparked them into life, France. They're ratting about a little bit more and doing the dirty side of the game more aggressively than they were previously. You can't help but feel it's damage limitation now for Scotland. If they can nick one on the counter, great. And they look like they may have be capable of doing that. Need to get to half time with the the deficit at three minimum. De Lima. Is that a big test now for these Scotland players to make sure that the heads don't go down and that it doesn't become a, a much bigger scoreline? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I say that after the first goal, psychologically, the whole picture changes because really you're setting out to frustrate France and keep the score at nil-nil as long as you can. That whole changes as soon as the first goal goes in, and it's where it's very, very difficult mentally to um, to get back into the game, never mind 3-0. Matisse Tell. Fernandez to El Hanach. Finley Pollock winning the ball. Trying to find that opening, going towards Matthew Anderson. But he's unable to get there. Yeah, it's wild low over hit from Finley Pollock. He's made use of those situations a few times, but that one wasn't executed particularly well. Fernandez to De Lima, Fayad. Marvin De Lima does brilliantly. The offside flag goes up. Well, I tell you what, I think that one's probably went in Scotland's favour because I'm sitting right along the line and he didn't look offside to me. However, you must say that Scotland were due a break. Mackenzie Kars is dispossessed by Uga Chukwu and Matis Tell's touch just isn't quite there this time. No, it wasn't at all. And Idan Diop was on in across the other side. So I'm glad Uga Chukwu decided to go for Tell. Who miscontrolled the ball. Murray Johnson, who's not really had much of a chance with any of the France goals so far. Lovely touch there by Josh Adam off the shoulder. Straight down to his teammate. Scotland end up giving away a cheap throw in in their own half.
Ben McPherson just getting a bit of a ticking off from the referee before this throw in's taken. Maybe still feels aggrieved about that penalty earlier on. And so he should. Terence Kudu. Carry with a lovely turn to get away from Robbie Ewer. And here is Terence Kudu to Idan Diop. And Jacob Blaney gets the touch. He felt it was a goal kick, but it will be a corner. Yeah, I think it takes a nick off his boot. Blaney. France, they, they knock the ball about slow, so slowly. They almost lull you in a kind of false sense of security. And then as soon as an opening presents itself, they move with such speed. Very impressive to watch from boys of such a young age. Not quite the same speed in trying to get the ball back in play, as you'd expect at 3-0 up. De Lima's delivery's been good so far. He takes again, this time towards the front post. Ryan Duncan gets there and Fayad's shot in the end, loops up into the air. Murray Johnson is fouled. Yeah, he makes it extremely obvious the striker that he's no interest in the ball he just wants to back in to a corner this time from De Lima goes near post yeah, just barges straight into him eyes ah, not interested on the ball Eden Diop France immediately winning the ball back from this goal kick Fayad thinks about a shot he goes for it Fayad and that one just wide of Murray Johnson's goal yeah it, <sighs> so so close to going in and it, you know Murray Johnson tries to feed a ball out to the fullback McPherson I, I mean you don't want to just lump the ball up the pitch you need to stick to what you want to do in the game plan but it goes straight back to France and the captain might even just skim the post a little bit I think Murray Johnson may have got there had it been on target well, Khalil Fayad has played his way into Montpellier's team this season their first team made his debut against Paris Saint-Germain in August actually came on and set up a goal against the French champions in a 5-2 loss. He's played eight more times in the French top division since then. I mean, it's quite incredible the experience and the, the appearances and the goals and the different bits and bobs these guys have got between them um, at the very highest level in some countries. And they're playing at under-19s level. Fayad to De Lima, back to Fayad who seems to be popping up all over the park. El Hanach looking for De Lima, does really well to take it under control. Fayad, here's Uga Chuklu. De Lima, tight angle, and it will go out for a corner to France. Well, when a French player falls down in the box, I was slightly concerned he was going to point at the spot there. Um, but it's good defending in the end. It's a, it's a really good ball, you must say. Did a chuck it, takes it in well. McPherson gets back and defends well also. Will be the captain to take. And the header was there from Edan Diop. Such a big side, they really are. I mean, I think it's Jacob Blaney that's jumping with him there, and he's not a small lad, Jacob Blaney, but he jumps and gets nowhere near the ball, simply overpowered. Five minutes left to go in this first half. France have shown their quality. And have shown why they will top this group. 7-0 winners against Kazakhstan last week. 2-0 over Iceland at the weekend. And now 3 to the good against Scotland here at Somerset Park. Fayad to Matisse Tell dropping very deep. 
to get involved in play. Robbie Ewer trying his best to take the ball off Fernandez there, but it's the type of game that it's tough for a striker. You are isolated up there. You are. I mean, he's moved Mabudi, and it looks like it's more of a 4-4-2 now, to be honest. Billy Stark's changed it, but they're not having any joy at all since the switch. Tell. Who's taken a bit of a knock there. And it's gone down. Not the man France will want to see injured, but... Not sure they'll take any risks with him at 3 0 up. He's back on his feet now. Yeah, he'll not want to come off. He'll want his second hat trick of the qualification campaign. Carey gets away from two Scotland players, but not a third. But Matty's Tell, who's made a quick recovery. Diop. Ugachukwu looking for Matty's Tell over the top. Blaney, Duncan, and Adam with headers away. And Robbie Ewer with a really good turn to get away from Fayad. And he's eventually fouled, or so I thought, by Ayman Kari, but Dimitri Mantin, the Moldovan official, didn't think so. Yeah, I mean, he's closer to it than I am, the referee, but he was also closer to the penalty decision, but it's, I mean, it looked like a two-handed shove. I also think the captain, Fayad, he had a wee kick at Robbie Ewer as well, trying to bring him down. He's a couple of those fired. I think he's been lucky to get away with them. It was previous to him advancing up the pitch, Robbie York, but it's another good turn. Just lacking the support, given the defensive unit and structure of Scotland. I tell you who's causing a lot of problems. It's Ugo Chukwu. He's playing between the lines. If you watch him, he drops deep, but then he advances up the pitch when Tell drops deep, and it's, it's extremely difficult to, to pick up. Here he is again. Another player with... League on experience, he's played eight times for Wren in the top flight this season. And played five of their six Europa League games as well. Yeah, I mean, he literally goes from a defensive midfielder to playing a number 10 to playing as a striker. He's advancing into the box now, but then he'll drop deep. It's extremely hard to, to mark, to communicate so quickly between the midfield and the defence, but Scotland are now in two banks of four with the two strikers up front, Euron Mabudi. Pollock. Fayad. Looking for the run of Terence Kudu. Adam gets a touch on it. He does well there, Adam. He's not a defensively minded player, and I thought he'd been caught out. He recognises the danger. He has to concede the corner. However, there's a better outcome than Kudu getting in behind him. Well, they've had decent deliveries from both sides, France, but they go short with this one. Fayad towards the back post. The header back into a dangerous area. Scotland are able to get it away, temporarily at least. Carry to De Lima. Goes for the curling effort. That one was never troubling Murray Johnson. Yeah, he was desperate to shift it onto his left foot as soon as he received the ball. Anderson knew that. Forced him in the pitch and high, wide, and handsome from De Lima. Or not so handsome, should I say? Johnson to take, and there will be no added time at the end of this first half. Scotland trailing France 3-0. The French side, top of the group. Scored plenty of goals in this qualification section already. And Matisse Tell, the Bayern Munich number nine, has shown his quality, hasn't he, Rory? He has. I mean, that first finish, it was his first half sight of goal, shall we say, in the, in the half in the game, and just rocketed it into the bottom corner. It went at some rate of knots. You know, he's performed well. A little bit loose on the ball at times, but you can see his quality shining through. Hugo Chukwu has been a standout as well. You know, Scotland need to get in, they need to regroup. They need to try and find a way to trouble the France goal. I, I understand it's really, really difficult, but 
you know, that's their job as football players, and Billy's job, uh, Billy Stark's job as the manager to try and get a tune out of the players, to try and find a way to unlock this French team, but they'll also not want to go on and concede four and five. Yeah, well, Matty's tell did opening, it did open the scoring for France, but Scotland had held them out quite well before then. They would have been happy with their performance, and this is where they got up the park early on. Yeah, and Josh Adam cuts inside this time. He does well. And it's a good ball in behind the defence. Mabudi is capable of better than that. That was at 0-0. You see here, Kerr Smith, it's a poor ball. He just tries to play it into the channel. Doesn't catch it right. Just thinking there, can he engage the ball? Can he stop the shot? Haven't seen it again now. I think he can be more aggressive in getting to the ball because a player of that quality will punish you. Yeah, he only needed one chance. Matis Tell to open the scoring for France. That was his fourth goal of these qualification stages so far. And then Ryan Duncan went close with a free kick. Yeah, he did. Good technique. He does, just doesn't get enough purchase on the ball to swerve it into the corner and it ends up hitting the side net. And it did get the crowd on their feet. And here's where Scotland will have felt hard done by Uga Chukwu going down in the box. A penalty given. Andrew, that gets worse every time I see it. I mean, how he can say that that's a penalty is its just beyond me. Uga Chukwu pops the one-two with tail. And you'll see the foot come out here. I, I mean, you could not win the ball any cleaner if you tried. You really couldn't. It's an outrageous decision. And McPherson is pleading his innocence, quite rightly so. But ball slotted into the corner. Not a problem for Tell. Gets his second of the game. Five for these qualification stages so far. Matis Tell. It means that he's joint level the top goal scorer and then here was a third goal all the way through to Idan Diop who had the easiest of finishes he did but again the ball needs to be stopped at source if you look here the ball comes out can Mabudi get there can the right back get there I think he can he ambles and he jumps lazily as soon as the ball's delivered it causes chaos in the box and Idan Diop gets in at the back stick to make it three well here was Scotland with a chance in the break a lovely pass from Josh Adam in the build up yeah, it was beautiful, outside of the boot, very cultured. But unfortunately, it doesn't lead to much. It's a good hold-up play, that one from Ewer. That's a beautiful pass from Josh Adam, really, really good. Picks out Finlay Pollock. And again, you're just looking for that in front of Robbie Ewer, not behind him for the cutback. And those are the little details, Andrew, that France get right, that Scotland don't quite get right in the final third, and that's a huge, huge difference. Well, three goals for France in this first half. It's looking unlikely Scotland will make the elite rounds of qualifying in March. The half-time score, Scotland nil, France three. Cars, Mabudi. Lovely feet by Diri Mabudi, and again. Out to Barry Hepburn. Mabudi, the back heel into the path of Barry Hepburn. It's wonderful football from Scotland. And the strike it saved. But the second time of asking, it's Robbie Ewer who opens the scoring for Scotland. His first goal at under-19 level. He's already got a goal for the Rangers senior team. And he's now on target at international level. Yeah, take a bow, Diri Mabudi. What a run that was. The initial take, the drop of the shoulder, sells the defender a dummy, goes in behind, jinx past two or three, as we see here. Like I said, they've all started the game well in a, in a forward position. Cars. Does well to get by his man, Mackenzie Cars. A wonderful strike and a fantastic save as well from Miras Ricard. Scotland so close to making it too, but that was a really good stop. It was a really good stop. Sometimes you, you get the feeling when you see these again that they're for the cameras. However, I, I must say that Miras, Miras Ricard makes a fantastic save. Mukut will be looking for a better delivery this time round. Oh, and it's in, Kazakhstan have equalised, and it's a goal for Jan Trifonov from the corner. Only really their second shot of the match, and Kazakhstan have levelled things at Somerset Park. Well, they've only got themselves to blame Scotland, but I must say it's a fantastic header by Trifonov. Hepburn. Robbie Ewer leaves it for Josh Adam. And that one going just over the bar. Scotland going close again. Yeah, another chance goes begging, and it's a good one. Adam. On the turn, gets it out to Matthew Anderson. 
Go for goal himself, it's deflected, and it's over the goalkeeper, and then a huge stroke of luck from Matthew Anderson, but Scotland are back ahead in this game, and it's the Celtic fullback that's got it. Well, I touched on it a second ago, Karsh telling Anderson, get your backside up the pitch and go and make something happen, and he earns his luck by doing exactly that. Tries to get past Matthew Anderson as well, who makes the block, and then it's a block as well from Connor Allen. And a strike from distance, deflected, and it's in. Sultan Askarov equalises. A deflected goal for Kazakhstan this time. But the worst has happened. They've equalised Kazakhstan. Scotland need to find a goal from somewhere. Smith finding Harkness. The ball across the face of goal. And there's the finish from Robbie Ewer. The two Rangers players linking up. The ball over the top from Kerr Smith was wonderful. Jack Harkness put it into the middle of the box. And there was Robbie Ewer for his second of the game. Scotland react quickly. Better, that's what you want to see. Good ball to Mabudi. Adam gives it back to Mabudi. Ball across the face of goal. And Kazakhstan clear the danger. It was good work. What a difference it makes. Mackenzie Cars, as soon as he receives the ball in the middle of the pitch, miss out. Yep. He has trained a few times with Manchester City's first team. Pep Guardiola keeping an eye on him. Josh Adam says he look looks up to the likes of... Well, here he is, Josh Adam. Could he score? That's a lovely dink over the goalkeeper. And the finish to match. Fantastic. We were just talking about the quality of Josh Adam. And he goes and does that. Yeah, that's the goal that I said would be welcomed. The goal that gives Scotland the cushion. And my goodness, what a magnificently composed finish that is. The keeper comes rushing out. Anderson. Trying to find Robbie Ewer, who's only got a couple of minutes left to try and get his hat-trick. Mabudi. Will he go himself? Cuts inside. Diri Mabudi. Not a strong enough hand from Mirash Rickard. And Diri Mabudi has a goal. Scotland have five. Yes, indeed they do, Andrew. And you would have to describe that as the icing on the cake. And he blows the full time whistle. Scotland are winners here at Somerset Park. Five goals. And a very good second half display, especially. I'm Marie Zibenko, I'm from Ukraine, and I'm a young football referee. Originally, I'm from Dnipro, from Ukraine. It's uh, on east of Ukraine, in, in the middle, like, between uh, Kyiv and Kharkov. Uh, it's a really lovely city. I was born 20th September uh, of uh, 2003, I'm 18 years old, and uh, it was an amazing life. I just uh, go into the gym, I finished school. And uh, before the war, it's, it's like a calm life. I have a lot of friends to hang out with them, like to go to the cinema, to cafes, and refereeing, of course. We have a lot of uh, cities competition, regions competition, and of course, all of Ukrainian competitions, like uh, women, Premier League, First League, and of course, yeah, a lot of cities championships where I worked. Uh, football hour in our country don't plan to start the nearest future, unfortunately, due to the war. So I decided to move to other countries where is football now. So I chose the Scotland and I have never regret about my choice. And now I'm here and uh, I'm a new member of the Scottish Football Association. And I'm really happy, got a lot of support from referee department and of course from my new colleagues. It was really a warm welcome. I really like Scotland uh, because it's like old buildings, really kind and polite people. But sometimes I, I don't like the weather here because it's always changed, but uh, I used to that, it's okay. <laughs> I have never lived with my parents for such a long time and I just live only by myself, without any friends, without my family. But I met a really good uh, people here in Scotland from Ukraine too. Uh, so now I have 
maybe a few friends from Ukraine here and we can hang out a little bit together. And uh, of course, uh, we chat every day with my parents. They help me um, always believe in myself and it's just a good push up for my future. So I try to be confident because I don't want to let down my parents because they give me a lot of opportunities to, like, to promote in Ukraine. In Scotland, uh, I can feel like it's a second home because uh, people uh, always uh, want to help you, want to uh, share like your minds, your opinions, and that's really cool. So for me, I don't have any problems with communication in Ukraine, in Scotland, so it, it doesn't problem because uh, firstly, I'm really worried about maybe some conversation with Scottish people because uh, uh, here it's uh, cold weather most of the time and maybe these people can be frozen, you know what I mean? So, uh, but no, there are a lot of warm people. <laughs> I every day uh, um, read the news about my country and it, it's really hard to me imagine that uh, my city can attack every day by rockets but uh, I try to don't think a lot about it because now I'm here to, to promote me as a Ukrainian referee and uh, show that we have a really good school of referees and we have like uh, inspiration from our, you know, our spirits, from Ukrainian spirits and we want to share it for whole people. Like, and uh, I also want to dedicate all my achievements here to my Ukrainian people. Well, Scotland nil, France three, the half-time score here at Somerset Park in this under-19s Euro 2023 qualifying round match. No changes for either side at the break. What do you think Billy Stark will have said to the players at half-time? It's a difficult one. You know, we were discussing there at half-time and I'm saying, do you go not all out because you can't do it against a, a team of this calibre, but do you, you know, set your stall out to go and try and get back into the game to, to get a goal? and risk conceding four or five, or is it damage limitation? I think the first five minutes will tell us. In terms of his message, it'll probably be not to lose spirit um, and try to be mentally strong and perform well in the second half. We're just about to get underway now. There originally wasn't even a ball on the pitch there when Matty's tail went to kick off, but we are all ready now. Standing over the ball with Leslie Ugachukwu, two players have been pivotal for France in the opening 45 minutes. I actually half thought France may ring some changes at half time given their very comfortable position in the group and being 3 0 up, give other players an opportunity, but and which we will see as the game progresses. However, I thought we may have seen some at half time. No changes at all. The referee does like to take his time to. Start kickoff. You did the same in the first half. Yeah, Dimitri Montina is just waiting for something to happen here. Not quite sure what. Maybe the players have come out just a tad early for the second half. Not the type of conditions you want to be standing about in, Rory. No, Cali Fayad's asking the question: What's taking so long? Obviously, we don't know what the answer to that is, but. Ugachukwu looks absolutely freezing standing in that centre circle. And eventually we do get this second half underway. Dire Mabudi immediately winning the ball for Scotland. Ben McPherson goes long. Composure in the header from Neremiah Fernandez. How calm is that from Ayman Kari? Extremely. I actually thought Josh Adam was going to nick it. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to. Well, Matthew Anderson has slipped. It will allow France to get forward. It's a lovely chop inside. Uga Chukwu. Kudu trying to play the ball into the box. Pollock. Duncan. to Robbie Ewer, who does really well on the turn to find Josh Adam. Yeah, he does. Lovely touch. Marvin De Lima tracking back well. Mabudi. Adam.
Pollock. The option of Robbie Ewer in the middle. He finds almost the head of Robbie Ewer. But it just shaves the top of his hair, the Ranger striker. But the attack's not dead. Cars. Go for the cross himself. And there was Robbie Ewer trying to attack again. But a really good start to this second half from Scotland. Yes, indeed, Andrew. Finlay Pollock. Shown real aggressive, positive. Duncan on his favoured left foot. That one blocked. Finlay Pollock, he's, he's so positive when he gets the ball. No qualms at all about taking on his fullback. And he leaves him for dead. And Robbie, you're very unlucky. It's a great run that he makes. Can't quite get his head on the end of it. Yeah, well, Finlay Pollock hasn't played in the Premiership for Hearts, but has appeared in the Europa Conference League. Also played for them in the Championship as well. Made his debut when they were in the second tier. The ball just too high for him there. And Risser with his arms outstretched, asking why Minto Omungu didn't get onto that, but not quite sure the pass was good enough. Yeah, I, I, I'm not convinced either. He's, not, he's still not happy with him, but I don't think that um, unless Minto Omungu can extend his leg or <laughs> it can grow, he was ever going to get in the end of that. Really good start, though, from Scotland in the second half. Magudi wins the ball from Carey. Adam trying to flick it around the corner for Mabudi, who's caught in the face by Ayman Carey, and it will be a free kick to Scotland. Dimitri Mantine wants to have a word with the Paris Saint-Germain midfielder. It was a bright start to this second half, Rory. Robbie Ewer going twice close to heading the ball goalwards. Yeah, I mean, he sails past Kudu like he's not even there, and it's a really good ball into the box. And it's not actually dissimilar, the run that Robbie Ewer makes when it recycles back out to the right-hand side. Mackenzie Cars puts it, good ball into the box. And he can't quite get there again, the defender just does enough to put him off. Ugochukwu. Good work by Ryan Duncan, trying to flick it forward to Robbie Ewer. Who will be happier with what he's seen in terms of service in the second half they have been putting the ball into the box scotland trying to find robbie your yeah i mean he's been feeding off scraps for large part, parts of this game he gave the ball away once in the first half and it come up to him but other than that his hold up play as i said for a young man that's usually the last part of strikers games to develop but he's done it really well tonight in the main de lima to matty's tell He's got Muntu Wamungu on the overlap, who tries to play it into the six-yard box and eventually puts the ball out for a Scotland goal kick. Yeah, I was just waiting on that flag going up again. It didn't quite come. Good move by France. De Lima's always desperate to get it onto the left foot. Comes out wide. Timing of the pass from Tails, really good. He's got to deliver that first time, in my opinion. Muntu Wamungu, the fullback. Minto Wamungu, one of the PSG contingent, signed his first professional contract in the summer until 2025. Dimitri Mantin, the referee, just wanting a quick word to a couple of players before play restarts. Not quite sure what that was about. Into Amungu's throw in. He's featured for his club in the UEFA Europa League, but takes a foul throw there. Not something you see very often. No, it's not. Um, don't know what it was for. Maybe his foot was on the pitch. It certainly didn't look like he threw it any differently to what you would expect. But oh well, there you go. We'll take any break at this moment in time. Blaney to Kerr Smith, the Aston Villa centre back, making his seventh appearance. At this level, still just 17 years old, but Uga Chukwu. Oh, he gets away with one there, Andrew. Oh, he gets away with one there. 
Ryan Duncan, because that's not a foul. If anything, it's a foul the other way. Cars. Mackenzie Cars to Kerr Smith. Pollock going for the flick round the corner, but gives the ball back to France. El Hanach to Nehemiah Fernandez. He gets it back. Could do just. Losing out there initially, Idan Diop is back there, all the way back now to Robin Risser. See, this is where now I think Scotland can take a wee chance. If the press gets beaten, France have got to break all the way up the pitch. Josh Adam now playing more centrally than he was in the first half as well. Finley Pollock over to the left. Uga Chukwu, who's been playing everywhere on the pitch so far today. Tell tries for the spin between the two Scotland players. Does win a throw in. They will take chances, France, and they will give you the ball back. You just need to be a little bit braver when the timing's right, of course, to get close to France's goal. Ayman Carey to Terence Kudu, looking for the run of Matisse Tell, but Jacob Blaney's strong in making sure that the Bayern Munich striker doesn't get through. McPherson and here's Didi Mabudi just unable to get his foot on the ball. But he has won Scotland a foul. Nehemiah Fernandez had a high arm there as he went to hold off the Manchester City winger and gets booked for his trouble as well. Well, he's got a look of bewilderment on his face, Fernandez. It did look like excessive force to use today's terminology. Good ball down the line. Booty tries to take a touch first time, it just bounces over. Yeah, I mean, that's totally unnecessary. He doesn't need to do that. I know my booty's slightly smaller than him, but, I mean, a clear elbow across the face. In this day and age, he's, he's possibly lucky to only see yellow there, you know. First yellow card of the game to Nehemiah Fernandez. Mackenzie Cars with a chance to deliver for Scotland. Jacob Blaney, Kerr Smith up from the back. Robbie Ewer, a physical presence in there too. Carson, it's headed away and then cleared by France. Scotland not making the most of the set piece opportunity, and France will look to create something of their own at the other end. It will be a... Well, I think it's actually going to be a booking for simulation here. <laughs> I mean, it looked a clear clip of the heels. He cuts inside his man and, he, and he's tripped Mutu Wamungu. I, I can't quite see what the referee's seen there again. You know, he gets the last one right, but that one for me, let's have a look. Uh, maybe not as much contact as I thought. I still think it's a foul, though. Kier Smith catches his hip. Into Wamungu, certainly feeling hard done by there. I don't, even if he feels that it's not a free kick, I don't think it's a booking. Josh Adam does well to get away from Uga Chukwu. Mabudi. McPherson. Celtic fullback looking for the right chance to get the ball in the box, but Marvin Delima tracks back well. He's so sharp, Josh Adam. He's the only one, really, him and Finlay Pollock, the two of them, sorry, that have looked and actually believe they can get by the French back four. But this is where France can be really dangerous. Matis Tell gets it back. Matis Tell. He'll certainly want his hat trick. De Lima. 
into Womungu. He's on the overlap, cuts the ball into the middle of the box, and there's Fayad arriving. Murray Johnson gathers. Yeah, good take from Murray Johnson. This time, unlike the last time, Mutu Wamungu does lift his head and tick out a light shot. Murray Johnson's equal to the shot from Fayad. But as you said, Andrew, they're so dangerous on the break. That all came from a Scotland free kick. Well, Robbie, you're just trying his best to hold the ball up there, but crowded out in the end. Just so many white shots around him when he gets the ball in those areas. See, I told you that they went that time, and you could notice that. They pressed higher up the pitch, they took the opportunity to do it, and the France kicked it straight out the pitch. Scotland not making the most of the throw in. Tell to Ugachukwu. Fayad, who's always looking for the ball in that France midfield. Kudu to Diop. Back to Kudu. Back into the path of Diop. And it did flick up and hit the hand of the Monaco forward. Yeah, good combination down the right-hand side. As I've touched on before, they're so quick when they break France. It's good play from Kudu and Diop, quick one-two. He's a little bit unfortunate, I must say. It just bobbles up and hits his hand, but it's a handball all the same and the correct decision. He done Diop yet to make his first team debut for Monaco. Joined him in 2019 from Tour. Matis Tell holds on to it. He's got Muntu Amungu on the overlap. Cuts inside. And then it's cut out by Josh Adam, but play has been stopped because there's a player down in the centre of the pitch. Yeah, it's Kerr Smith, who just gesturing to the referee that he feels he was unfairly taken out. I mean, Minto Amungu has got to be played in there by Tell. You know, I know he's got 14 appearances for Bayern Munich, so I don't know if there would be many in the French team who would be willing to question him, but if I'd ran 70 yards, I would certainly want the ball. Good to see Keir Smith back to his feet. Made 12 appearances for Dundee United before making the move down to Aston Villa in the summer, Keir Smith. He's played for their under-21s in the EFL Cup against Portsmouth and Crawley Town. Good turn. Smith goes back to Murray Johnson. Adugachukwu bearing down on him. He goes long. Robbie, you're held off by Eunice El Hanich. Fernandez to Munto Wamungu, who's been heavily involved so far in this second half. Yeah, he has. Marodin runs up the pitch. Picked up extremely good positions. Kudu to Matty's tail, showing his pace. Jacob Blaney ushering him wide. Tell to El Hanich. Back to Tell, it's a lovely one too. Gets the ball across the box. No takers. Marvin De Lima's touch is too heavy. Ben McPherson. Wasn't giving that one up easily. Trying to get past Mundo Amungu. He plays it back to Robin Risser. Yep, good anticipation by McPherson. Fayad tries to be too clever there. McPherson dispossesses him and strides forward. Marvin De Lima, the Bordeaux winger. Here he is again, going for the first time pass. Intercepted by Jacob Blaney.
of these French players, so comfortable on the ball. Just making it look so casual at times. And a quick passing to match. Yeah, it's nice on the eye, isn't it? De Lima away from two navy blue shirts. And the pass with the outside of the boot goes towards Terence Kudu. Goal kick to Scotland. Scotland will be happy that France haven't really created too much in this second half so far. Just that one stop for Murray Johnson from Fayad shot, which he was always going to take in. Yeah, I mean, it's the old argument, isn't it? You know, have Scotland got better? Have France taken their foot off the gas? But let's give Scotland some credit. They've had some good passages of play in this second half. And Billy Stark can be pleased about the reaction they've had since half time. 62 minutes on the clock, around the time that both managers may be looking to their bench to make some changes. And there's Fayad again, he's committed several fouls tonight and he's flew under the referee's radar. I think one more and he's got to go in the book. See Dan O'Day and Steve McManus are in the crowd tonight. A collection of Celtic's B-team stars on the pitch for Scotland. Yeah, Ben McPherson, Matthew Anderson, Mackenzie Cars, the three Celtic starters tonight. Josh Adam on the ball, one of two Manchester City players, and it's a fantastic ball through to Matthew Anderson. And the pass just too far away from Robbie Ewer and gathered, but once again, a real bit of quality from Josh Adam. Yeah, really good from Josh Adam. The ball goes wide, and we know Robbie Ewer can finish from that type of angle and that type of cutback. We watched him do it against Kazakhstan. However, the ball wasn't quite right for him this time, unfortunately. Ayman Kari skips away from a couple of Scotland challenges and Eden Diop shot is saved at the near post by Murray Johnson. My goodness, he just eats up the ground, Ayman Kari, doesn't he? I mean, literally three Scotland shots clawing at him, trying to get him back. That's a good setup as well for his teammate, Eden Diop. He's looking for his second of the game. Murray Johnson comes out, spreads himself well. Good save by the goalkeeper. And you can see why many of these French players have first-team experience for their clubs. Ayman Kari doesn't, but he was on the bench for PSG earlier on this season. So they certainly rate him at just 18 years old. Marvin De Lima standing over this corner. Headed away by Ryan Duncan at the front post. Josh Adam winning the throw. Even to be on the bench, you know, you're talking about a side containing Neymar, Mbappe, Messi, even to be in that pool of 18 players at, at that young age is quite a feat. And I'm sure he will get minutes based on what I've seen of him tonight. Yeah, well, Ivan Carey also won the TT Dior Award, which is for the best academy player at PSG. He won that in 2021. He was in the same academy team as Javi Simons, who is playing first-team football at PSV Eindhoven at the moment. Pretty sure he's in the squad for the World Cup for, for Netherlands as well. Yep. Might be wrong with that. He is indeed. Robin Reeser, Strasbourg goalkeeper. Another one who's been on the bench in Liga on this season, four times for Strasbourg. Certainly comfortable with the ball at his feet anyway, or confident, should I say. Yeah, just 17 years old, Robin Reeser. Carey, who is knocked over. Play will go on with Terence Kudu down the right. Fayad just slips on the turn. But there is a oh. player down. Scotland were on the attack. A few here frustrated just at the timing of Dimitri Montin blowing the whistle. Well, his timing was the transition. The timing was <laughs> wait till Scotland win the ball, ball back and blow the whistle. Quite bizarre, really. I mean, he let France have a passage of play for a good 10, 20, 30 seconds. And as soon as Scotland sprung and won it, he blew the whistle. It's quite strange. 
Ayman Kari who will receive treatment. Josh Adam, who has had plenty of moments to remember across these three games. And this was a wonderful piece of play. Yeah, he's so quick with his movement and sharp. And gets away from the French midfield. It's a good ball. And Robbie, you just can't quite get on the end of the Matthew Anderson cross. Well, Josh Adam with three goals for Scotland at under-19 level. Only made his debut in the September friendlies. Scored against Malta and the USA. Scored on Saturday here against Kazakhstan as well. Signed for Manchester City from Celtic in 2020. There is also a Scotland player down receiving treatment too. Ayman Kari is back to his feet. How did you spend your 18th birthday? Because Ayman Kari spent it on the pitch here. Not here, sorry, it was uh, at Capolo on Saturday. Right, there you go. Against Iceland. That my, was his 18th birthday. My 18th birthday? I can't quite remember that. I can remember my 16th birthday. I actually scored a goal for my first goal uh, as a full time professional uh, at 16 um, on my 16th birthday away to Dunfermline for Kilmarnock so there you go East End Park all the same my left foot thunderbolt should I say um, but in terms of my 18th birthday uh, I don't I think I want to know what you did in your 18th birthday <laughs> I can't quite remember he's been booked Who's he? yeah Finlay Pollock he's just been booked there and it was for the challenge on Ayman Carey that led to his initial injury when France were breaking up the park he did bundle over the midfielder yeah, it was France were attacking. It was quite cynical, Andrew. So you can maybe see why he's why he's decided to do that. Did injure himself in the process, Finlay Pollock, but he is back on his feet and will come on when play resumes. This is where the game starts to get broken up. I think we'll start to see quite a lot of substitutions now. Can change the impact and flow of the match. Yeah, well, France will make their moves first. A couple of players on the sidelines is. Murray Johnson's clearance is just sliced high into the air. De Lima. Almost comes away with the ball, but Josh Adam. In a very tight area. Wonderful feet by Josh Adam, and all France can do is foul him. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the technical ability, you've got to say Josh Adam is the one player out there who looks like he can compete with his French counterparts. Takes the ball off De Lima. Gets a wee ricochet of the ball, but this here, when the ball's under control, great feet, sucking a player in. Well, the scorer of France's third goal will make way. Aidan Diop and David Mokwa is coming on. He's been substituted on in both of France's games before this as well, in this group stage. Got a goal against Kazakhstan in that 7 0 win. I think he's changed his mind. Diop's trotting back over. Well, he'll stay on the pitch for now anyway. And play will resume. Substitutions will have to wait. It looked as if Matty's tail was ma maybe making his way over there, but we'll see shortly. Yeah, I don't know if it was maybe a malfunction with the, with the board and the numbers, but it does look like it will be tail to make way. He's not going to get his hat-trick unless he gets it in the next minute. Ukachukwu striding forward. And makes his way into the box. Idan Diop. Fired shot. Clears the goal and clears the stand here at Somerset Park. I mean, Ukachukwu doing what Ayman Kari did not so long ago. It just eats up half the pitch in seconds. Quite incredible. But that was wayward to say the least from Fayad. Well, the changes will take place this time. The first one, Nathan Boye Kiala, is coming on, who was the captain for France's first two games of these qualifiers. And it will be Leslie Ugachukwu who makes way. He looks slightly disappointed at that decision, but he has been fantastic tonight. Yeah, I don't think much flusters the big man, to be fair. I think he just takes everything in his stride. He's quite happy. The stroll off the pitch, good night's work for him. Very, very impressed. Just as impressive as Matthias Tell. 
He scored with a great finish, his first goal, and then tucked away the penalty. Another man who can be pleased with his night's work. Yeah, David Mokwa, the man coming on for Matis Tell. And there will be a change for Scotland as well. Kilmarnock striker Bobby Wales, who's also been a substitute in the last two games, came on in both those games, hit the post here on Saturday against Kazakhstan. On for Robbie Ewer. Yeah, a couple of half chances for Robbie Ewer, but overall a bit of a thankless task up there on his own. Not easy when your team's not got a lot of the ball. But I think he looked tidy enough when the ball did come up. And on another night, may have just nicked a goal. Into Womungu shepherding that one out of play. Mackenzie Cars holding his face, feels he was maybe caught. Yeah, Bobby Wales did make an impact when he came on against Kazakhstan, had a couple of good chances, wasn't able to take either, but certainly rated highly by Komarnik, just 17 years old, made three substitute appearances in Komarnik's last four matches. Yeah, he picked up some good positions. His anticipation of where the ball was going to land was really good. He took up great positions in the box. However, his finishing wasn't quite there. Hopefully it's different if a chance comes along tonight. De Lima, Mintu Wamingu. The ball just rolling out of play. Just under 20 minutes to go here at Somerset Park. Scotland holding France out in this second half. It was two Matisse Tell goals in the first half. One of those from the penalty spot, a harsh looking penalty that was given to France in that first half. And then Idan Diop getting the third for the visitors tonight. I mean, I can't pretend to have a vast array of knowledge about every single under-19 side in Europe. However, I would imagine this France side will be there or thereabouts when it comes to the elite rounds and then throughout the finals. Well, coming into this qualification stage, the teams are ranked by coefficient and France second on that list in Europe, just Portugal ahead of them. De Lima. Hitting the top of the bar with that cross. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what he was trying there. He was, well, I believe he was probably trying to stand it up to the back post, but he gets it horribly wrong and just shanks it straight out of the pitch. Fayad to Nathan Fly Kiala, his first involvement. Josh Adam is putting that one out of play. Josh Adam will certainly be happy with his contribution over these three games for Scotland. Yeah, he's shown enough for anybody watching to walk away and know that he's a right good player and amongst Europe's elite at this age group. was a key part of Manchester City's under-18s title win last season. Josh Adam played 25 of their 27 games, made part of their elite development squad, playing in the U UEFA Europa League, and also for their under-21s alongside Dire Mabudi. Yeah, you can see why the pair of them, low centre of gravity, they move the ball quickly, they're sharp and their movements would fit into Man City's framework. Carry to Terence Kudu, who's offside, Marvin De Lima, putting that one wide, but it wouldn't have counted if it hit the back of the net. Just one, Murray Johnson, just hang fire there, wait till you're set. Plays the ball, no one else is looking, and France just win the ball straight back again. Take time to get set up. He is always looking to get the ball back and play quickly. Murray Johnson, we've seen that over the last yep. two games and the 75 minutes of this match as well. Yeah, they weren't 3-0 down with 15 minutes to go, however, in the, in the previous two fixtures, and I just think you know, I, I know it's maybe the way you want to play, but you know, none, all the rest of his team are, are jogging, getting a recovery from France's last attack. Just don't think it's on there. Bobby Wales winning the ball back for Scotland. Smith. Striding forward, Kerr Smith. McPherson with a first-time cross. Terence Kudu. 
Just having to put that one out of play. Well, Scotland still trying to create. With less than 15 minutes on the clock. Duncan, good ball to McPherson, and the challenge goes in late, and it will be a penalty to Scotland. Yeah, they deserve a goal, I tell you, Andrew, for their endeavour in this second half, and lots of good play as well. They thoroughly deserve a goal, in my opinion, and that one was a penalty. I think we both knew straight away. Good Ryan Duncan. from Ryan Duncan in the build-up. Yeah, good play. And Mutu Wamungu gets caught out, and, and that reaction says to me, he knows himself it's a penalty. Without a shadow of a doubt. Come on, Mackenzie Carr, stuck this one away. Omuntu Amungu has already been booked in this game. The card stayed in the pocket of Dimitri Mantin there. And it will be, as you say, Mackenzie Carr to take his 12th appearance at under-19 level. The captain of this side yet to score for Scotland's under-19s. And he's got a big chance now to get that first goal and reduce the deficit to two. And he makes no mistake, goes into the same corner that Matisse Tell went in the first half. And Scotland have one back. Yeah, we've got afters here, but in terms of the penalty itself, step up, believe in your ability, pick a spot and go with it. And that's exactly what Mackenzie Kirst does. Really, really cool penalty. Tucked away well. And the keeper quite rightly gets booked. Yeah, the yellow card for Robin Risser, who just too physical there and trying to stop Mackenzie Cars from getting the ball. But he does get the goal, Mackenzie Cars. Yeah, Scotland does. have a goal. And that will give them some belief with 12 minutes left of the 90. Yeah, he does. <laughs> the referee was a one arm, one man army trying to stop. I don't know what Mackenzie Cars is getting booked for. That's an easy way out from the referee. He does nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing. All he's interested in is getting the ball back. Can't quite believe it himself, Mackenzie Cars. Yeah, he's made some strange decisions tonight, this referee. Well, all of a sudden, Scotland tails will be up. And is that maybe what they needed, Rory? Just going into the final 10 minutes or so of this game? Yeah, and I think genuinely think it's what they deserved uh, from, from the second half showing. I think they've done, they've been good. You know, I spoke about it being really difficult to come out and try and take the game to France. I think they've done that in the second half whenever they have had the opportunity. I think the linesman's gave offside here, and I'm not quite sure if the referee's noticed. Well, Marvin Delima was down just off the park, and it will be a free kick to Scotland. Marvin Delima back to his feet and back on the pitch as well. Another one of the French players that's looked dangerous, Marvin de Lima. Yeah, he's very left-sided. That's shown at times, but like you say, Andre's quality is undoubted. Made his Bordeaux debut in August. Came off the bench, scored two minutes and 20 seconds into his senior debut, Marvin de Lima. Yeah, not bad that. Not bad at all. He's complaining about something. I think his arm was maybe stood on as Ryan Duncan gets booked for hauling back. I am Ayman Carey, definitely a book in that one. Yeah, well, play has been disrupted a few times since Scotland got one back. Scotland will be hoping they can create another good chance in the next few minutes. And really worry this French side who have been dominant across this group so far. The first goal they've conceded in the three games. Yeah, and you see there, Scotland tried the high press, and it didn't work, and France played their way out. However, France now need to go and progress all the way up the pitch. And I just feel that earlier in the game, if they'd maybe been slightly braver in doing that, they may have created more opportunities. But, you know, credit to Scotland's reaction in the second half. It would have been very easy to crumble and lose by five or six. They've not done that, and they find themselves 3-1 now. Diop holding on to it for France. Mintu Amungu. Fayat to El Hanach.
Terence Kudu, it goes over the head of Kerr Smith, Ryan Duncan gets it to Deere Mabudi and it's nice feet by Deere Mabudi who's eventually fouled by Nathan Bly Kiala. Yeah, good first touch, under pressure in his own half, not where he wants to be taking the ball, on his side of foul. I show the quality of this France side as well, Nathan Bly Kiala was captain for their opening two games of this qualification round, had to settle for a place on the bench. Yeah, I can imagine he's got a good pool of players to choose from the manager. Plays his football in Italy with Parma. He's been on the bench for them three times this season, but yet to make his senior club debut. Straight out of play from Fernandez and Ben McPherson just wanting to get the ball back in play as quickly as possible with time ticking on. Yeah, let's keep going at them. You never know, they're going to make a couple more subs. They might not be up to the pace of the game. Let's see if we can grab another. And you just never know. Yeah, we're just getting their instructions from Lionel Rizel, the under 19s France manager. And the changes will take place now. First man coming on, Cech Diumbe. The Lorient fullback. Wilson Odebeer, the second man coming on for France. And it will be Edan Diop who comes off this time. Nearly came off earlier on this time. Don't he be so way. sure, he's not actually off yet. <laughs> yeah, he's off now. He's, he's had a good game, he done the up as well. Got in some good positions. His final product was lacking at times. However, he grabbed his goal in at the back stick, as you want from your wide man when the cross comes in from the opposite side. And he's performed overall really quite well. well how about this, Wilson? Oh, the Bear has played all 15 league on games for Trois this season. That's the type of quality that France are able to bring off the bench. Yeah, I mean, to be a regular in a league like Ligue 1 in France, you must be a player. Fayad. Looking for David Mokwa. I think Fayad's been relatively poor tonight. He's, he's passing, he's looked quite casual on the ball. He's... Um, been relatively poor. El Hanach. Hanich to Terence Kudu. There will be a free kick to Scotland. And it's going to be a yellow card for Yunus El Hanich. The captain Paris Saint-Germain in the UEFA Youth League this season. Maybe a bit of concern. Mackenzie Cars wants to get his teammate up and get on with it. He believes they can score again clatters into him. Yeah, it was Matthew Anderson that went down. He is back to his feet though. And Scotland will make a couple of changes of their own. As Billy Stark rolls the dice. It will be Barry Hepburn, the Bayern Munich winger, coming on for Thierry Mabudi. Another player who can be happy with their contribution over these three matches. And Murray Aiken, the Hibs midfielder, coming on for 
Finlay Pollock, the Hearts man. Well, Barry Hepburn's had a good round of fixtures. He came off the bench and impressed against Iceland. It was very good against Kazakhstan. So hopefully he can provide a late flurry here. You just never know if we can score from this. Mackenzie Kors to take. It's hooked over his own bar by David Mokwa, and it will be a Scotland corner. Yeah, fantastic delivery from Mackenzie Kars, you have to say, right in where you want the ball. France make France defend and deal with it. And they do that, results in a corner. Ryan Duncan to take, went close with a free kick in the first half. Looking to set one up here, but Fayad is able to carry it away and check Dumbia just on the park. It's tricked there by Josh Adam. Fake to go one way, turn the other. What do you think the biggest things these Scotland players will have learned from these past three games, Rory? How quickly top teams can punish you, is what I would say. One mistake from Kerr Smith, because France didn't look particularly potent at that point. They didn't trouble the Scotland goal. One mistake, the ball's in the back of your net. First involvement for Murray Aiken. The ball is just shielded out of play by Nehemiah Fernandez. A break in play, Rory, who would be your man of the match for Scotland tonight? I think the best player on the pitch in a navy blue jersey has been Josh Adam. I think he's shown flashes of brilliance at times in tight areas, keeping the ball for Scotland. And I think any opportunities that have come through for Scotland have come through himself. Lovely little pass with the outside of the boot in the first half to Finlay Pollock. And overall, he is my man of the match. Has trained with the Manchester City first team a few times, Josh Adam. And has made his impact during this international window. And the last as well, three goals in six appearances at this level now. And he'll be hoping his international career and club career go from strength to strength. Sure they will. Fantastic young talent. Dumbia to Marvin De Lima. Nehemiah Fernandez. Fayad on the turn. De Lima, it was a risky pass. Just about got away with it there, France. Duncan, and there's Matthew Anderson. Well, we have free kick to Scotland. France were hoping to get the ball into the box. And there will be a change for France as well. Coming on will be Johan Wakis Corey, who started the last two matches for France. I just wonder the point in the substitution at this stage. I mean, the game's won, you're top of the group. There's, n well, there's five minutes of added time. Oh, no, sorry, <laughs> number five's coming on. Apologies. Um, oh, no, there is five minutes added time, Andrew. Um, you just wonder the point of the substitution, but Scotland lucky to get away with that free kick, I think, because France were on the attack there inside the box. Iman Carey to come off. He's certainly impressed tonight, the Paris Saint-Germain midfielder. Yeah. Carry and Ugo Chukwu have been standouts for me. Obviously, Matthias Tail gets his two goals, which you can't deny him. But I think overall play, those two have been absolutely brilliant. Well, there'll be a change of shape for France in these final few minutes. Johan Wakis Torre is a centre back. He's slotted in to what is now a back five or a back three, if you like. France just happy to see this game out. Four minutes left of injury time. That five is a minimum, of course. Cars 
Ross is cynically taken out by Marvin De Lima there, and no surprise, the yellow card comes out. Oh, he's off. The second yellow as well for Marvin De Lima. A sour end to his night. He has looked very lively. He's caused Scotland problems, the Bordeaux winger. But it's not how he wanted to, well, have wanted to have gone out of this qualifying round. No, nope, certainly not. And it was so unnecessary as well. Mackenzie Cars was clearly getting there. I think he's maybe frustrated because the ball was taken off him. And it's a lunge. Silly, silly decision when you're on a yellow card. You've just got to suck it up and accept you gave the ball away. Well, a chance for Kenzie Cars to deliver. A chance for Scotland to maybe make the scoreline look a bit better. But France deal with it. They have such a physical presence in this team. But it is matched with huge technical ability as well all across the park. Yeah, as um, you know, we've seen a few upsets throughout the course of today in the World Cup. Saudi Arabia beating Argentina. Tunisia getting something against Denmark, however. Just a stretch too far for an upset here, unfortunately. It will be three points for Scotland from these three games. That win coming against Kazakhstan on Saturday. Person to Jacob Blaney. I think Billy Stark can be pleased with the second half. He's played well. Yeah, 3 0 down at half time. Some teams would maybe crumble and concede a few more. Scotland haven't done that. They've got a goal of their own. And here's Murray Aiken trying to get into that France box. But Scotland won a corner. Yeah, Mackenzie Cast trying to rally the troops see if they can grab another goal and make the scoreline look even better. Cars will put this one straight into the box. It dropped into a good area of the box, but there was just no Scotland players attacking it. And here's where France can be so dangerous. The numbers going forward, it goes towards Wilson Odebert, but it's over his head. Josh Adam does enough to win the throw in for Scotland. Yeah, he does. Scot Scotland's deliveries and set pieces haven't been bad at all. Mackenzie Cars has put them into good areas, but France are just big and strong and dominant that Scotland have struggled to make use of the balls in. Duncan to Barry Hepburn. Clips it to Murray Aiken and cushions it towards Mackenzie Cars who slips but is able to recover. And Cars across too close to Robin Racer. Time up. And the full time whistle goes and the curtain closes on Scotland's Euro 2023 qualifying campaign. They had to win tonight, but they knew that it was going to be a really tough task against a France side full of quality. It finishes 3-1 here to France at Somerset Park. It was 3-0 at half-time, two goals for Matis Tell, the Bayern Munich striker, one of those coming from the penalty spot. It was a harsh decision as well to award the penalty. And Idan Diop getting the other goal for France. But certainly an exercise that these Scotland players will learn a lot from, Rory. Yeah, and they grew into the game and that little bit of spirit got them through in the end and going into, you know, there's a lot of players who'll qualify for the next qualifying campaign as well, so they'll take a lot of experience and, you know, game knowledge and game know-how against the top one seeded team in the group the next time, and that's huge when it comes to these types of games to have played in them before and know what to expect I mean there's even star quality from this France team there Matis Tell, ball boys going up and asking him for selfies, they know who he is he's a Bayern Munich striker 
He's got four goals for Bayern Munich's first team this season. Two tonight. He got three last week against Kazakhstan. And that just sums up the opposition Scotland were facing tonight. Yeah, quite incredible. I mean, that, that is the, the cream of European football. If you're, if you're playing for Bayern Munich and scoring goals, it really, really is. Um, you know, and our boys have got to... Um, they've got to have the ambition to reach that type of level. Um, and go and do that themselves but you know they just came up against a, a better team tonight you must say in France who like I said before Andrew will probably be there or thereabouts come the dishing out of medals and trophies in this tournament well, let's take a look at some of the highlights from that second half as the players make their way off the pitch and Scotland were bright at the start of this second half Robbie you're coming close to getting his head on two crosses yeah, he tries to glance that one. Maybe better meeting it flush on the forehead. He tries to glance it into the corner, I believe. Good play from Finlay Pollock again. Belief in his own ability to run past his man. It's actually not dissimilar, this one, Andrew. Mackenzie Cars with the delivery this time, and again, you're just wondering, rather than glance it, try and catch your head on it. Forehead and get it straight into the net. Well, the Celtic man also almost linking up with the Rangers man. Scotland looked to try and get back in it. Here was your man of the match, Josh Adam. And this is exactly what we've seen from Josh Adam across these three matches. And just look at this for a pass. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, he skips by two in midfield. That's not the end of it. The final product is there. He plays in the fullback. And unfortunately, Matthew Anderson can't pick out Robbie Ewer, who would have had every chance, I believe, of putting it in the net had he been able to. But lovely. You know, he's actually pointing where he, where he wants his man to run. Matthew Anderson brilliant pass unfortunately we couldn't make anything of that attack well France didn't worry Murray Johnson too much in the second half but there was a chance for Redan Diop and Murray Johnson had to be alert yeah good save you quite often see those slipping between the goalkeeper's legs but a good save and then Scotland getting a penalty of their own yeah I mean that was as much a penalty as France uh, the French penalty wasn't a penalty you described it as harsh Andrew given his position I would describe it as ridiculous but that one a, a certain penalty absolutely no doubt about it whatsoever and another defence splitting pass which got us it Mackenzie Carth to take and Mackenzie Carth to score yep very similar to his counterpart in the first half Matthias Tell same corner the keeper guesses the wrong way and he makes it 3-1 And here was the red card in injury time. Marvin De Lima a challenge he really didn't need to make with France 3-1 up. No, he missed, needs to manage his temperament better there. I know he's only young and he'll make mistakes, but on a yellow card, it was sheer frustration at giving the ball away himself. He takes a heavy touch, the ball's taken off him. And then he just simply wipes out Mackenzie Carson and is quite rightly booked and sent off. Well, that was the final piece of action from this game. And this is how it leaves the league table. France topping the group. They've made their way through to the elite rounds, as have Iceland, who are 4-1 winners over Kazakhstan. And really, it was that game, the first game between Scotland and Iceland at Fur Hill that was a decisive one, because Iceland came away 1-0 winners, and that means that they progress. Yeah, I mean, football can provide shocks but you always have an idea of how things are going to work out at the start of these types of groups and you know we suggested France might have a clean sweep which they do that graphic says they've got six points they've got nine um, you know so the Scotland Iceland game given that the Kazakhstan gets zero points was, was going to be the decisive one I don't know when their, their flight home was Iceland after playing today but if it's this evening they'll be getting off that plane checking the score absolutely delighted that they've qualified well three games for Scotland in this group stage it was that 1-0 defeat to Iceland last Wednesday a 5-2 win against Kazakhstan on Saturday and it's ended with a 3-1 defeat to France here at Somerset Park tonight it won't be a trip to the elite rounds for Scotland ahead of Euro 2023 but a really good experience for all these young players who will have learned and grown from these three matches and they'll be looking forward to more games for Scotland under 19s. But that's it from myself and Rory Loy. Thank you for joining us across these three qualifying games. The final score here at Somerset Park tonight 
is Scotland 1, France 3.